fortune of hearing me try to sing it. And so I think you guys should be very grateful. We've got professional musicians on stage. And we actually have some more surprises coming up in a minute. So I'm happy to be with you right now. We're going to talk about the future of cybersecurity. Now, cybersecurity is such a growing field. It's such a dynamic field. It's an $80 billion industry. And to help me identify what's going to happen with the future of cybersecurity, I decided to turn to science fiction. I decided to go to Hollywood, where my own inspirations came from. People who know me know that Angelina Jolie in the movie Hackers, the year 1995, I was 14 at the time. After watching that movie, I knew that being a hacker is what I should be doing. So today, I have a distinguished panel of some of the best cybersecurity experts, some of the worst hackers, and some of the apparently great dancers. Yeah, let's give it up for them. Some great dancers and musicians on stage as well. And my friends, my hacker friends, my cybersecurity friends are going to help me with deciding we're going to use Hollywood. We're going, we're going to do a little Oscar show, an Academy Award show for the best and the worst depictions of hackers in movies. And we'll use that to see what we can learn about what's coming around the corner. You know, there are so many incredible technologies that are going to change our lives, but we don't know how they're going to do it. And so I hope Hollywood can help us imagine that. And to help us get started, I'd like to introduce a good friend, Mr. Matan Schauf. Please help me welcome him to the stage, Matan. And Matan is going to give us the nominations for the best hacker awards. Take it. There you go. Thank you very much, Karen. Hi, everyone. How are you all doing? OK, so uh, I'm a very, very good hacker, but I'm not a very good technical person, so I forgot to connect the audio. So is this the golden thing here, I'm imagining? There's one way to find out, right? OK, hopefully this would work. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't know. I can't hear anything. Is this the audio from the computer? OK. So um, today, I wanted to start off just by giving you guys a small taste of uh, what we see in the movie industry and the way that we see it. So we're going to give out a few awards for um, Oscar awards for movies. And let's just get started. So for us as hackers, it's always funny to see the way that hacking is portrayed in movies. So I want to give the Oscar award for the most ridiculous hacking scene in the history of Hollywood. And for that, I have to go to the basics. You guys all recognize this movie, right? Superman number three with Richard Pryor. And what we're going to see here is how hacking was viewed in 1983. And pay close attention, because it's going to go really, really fast, OK? So this is Richard working on his computer. And he's trying to steal money from his company's computers. And now he needs to provide some sort of authentication. The computer says, give security code. And he says, override all security. And the system is hacked. That was easy. Right? Amazing. I wish, if only it was that If only, were if that only easy. our day jobs the were like that. The security architect never thought of that, right? Yeah. Fantastic nomination. Okay. Next one. Actually, I have the same nomination, another, another nominee. Uh, do you guys know that piano song? Many plays the piano, right? Summer you know the, the one that you play with two, two people? Raindrops? Right? Have you ever seen two people on a keyboard? That's uh, NCIS, one of my favorite shows, by the way. Especially known for fantastic depiction of hacking, as you can see. What's going on? All right, maybe if we can get two hackers on one keyboard. What do you think, Matan? Okay, Aha, so here's the genius. He's going to solve it. All right, so Karen uh, is offering us <laughs> the dubbing for the movie, but yeah, two people working on the same Now it's three people. Time. Such windows. So wow. OK, you got the idea. But really, I, I even have a better hacking scene than that. And it, it always wonders me, you know, we're in the 21st century. But still, we need things like that, right? Whenever you want to connect something, Karen and I wanted to copy a computer from my Mac to her PC. Couldn't do it, right? This fact did not in any ways bother the creators of this next movie. This is the famous scene from Independence Day. 
where they board a spaceship. They fly out into space, into the mother spaceship, and they infect the computer on the spaceship with a virus. I, I, I can't get my... I can get a virus from a Mac to a PC, but they can infect an alien ship with a virus. <laughs> Unbelievable, really amazing, I, I amazing. I think the Oscar goes to Jeff Goldblum in this category, right? Okay, moving, next on, category. To, moving on to the next category, because we're short on time. The next category now would be the most old school hack. And for the most old school, I have to go back to the sources of cybersecurity. And of course, I'm talking about the movie War Games. Anyone here seen it? All right, Classic. Cool. Best movie ever. So in this scene, what we're going to see is Matthew Broadwick hacking into his computer, into the school's computer. And, or maybe we won't. Well, it's possible I'm, that we won't. Yes, we will. No, we won't. I can tell them what's happening. Okay, so please can. The fun thing about this, and this is why it's the most old school, not only is this guy uh, hacking into his professor's network into their high school computer, all he had to do was call the school and get the secretary to tell him the professor's password. Anyone remember what the password was? It's pencil. It was pencil. And the sad thing about it is that even today, recycled passwords, people use the same passwords all the time, allow hackers to get into systems very easily. Right. So when it comes to passwords, don't recycle. And now moving on to the last category of this day, and that's the most realistic depiction of hacking. And this is now serious. I know that I've been joking till now. But what you're going to see now is a scene from a movie, and it actually shows a real hacking prog in progress. So this is the movie. You guys all recognize it. It's Matrix Revolutions, the second Matrix. Anyone knows which scene I'm going to show? Anyone remembers? So Neo goes into the Matrix. He has to do something. The whole building is going to explode. Trinity rushes in to save him, and she needs to take down the entire power grid. So this is Trinity running in. She's I, I love in the computer. Trinity. Now, the computer is protected with a password, so she uses an NMAP, which is an uh, attack tool, a tool called SSH Nuke, and she gains root access. The password, by the way, is Zion0101. I don't know if you caught that. She gets root access, and then to save Neo's life, she takes down the entire grid, and this is what it looks like, a cyber attack in the movies. Yeah, very realistic. Now, the tool that she uses is called Nmap. It's a real tool that hackers use. It's an amazing tool. And the more interesting about it is that the people that wrote this tool are actually huge contributors to the, uh, to the industry in Hollywood. And you can go to nmap.org slash movies and see all the movies and shows that they helped better their script to make it look more reliable. Thank you, Matan. So, now, after that short introduction, So after that short introduction, I think it's almost safe to assume that bugs, right, security vulnerabilities, will exist in virtually any technology we'll use. Now I'd like to try and identify what's going to happen in the future of cybersecurity by asking, uh, you know, the fantastic audience here and my panel members, can anyone tell me what is the most popular language in the world? You might think it's Chinese, right? Maybe Hindi, English perhaps. I see a ginger gentleman in the front row. Do you have the answer, sir? Uh, Java. Indeed, it is Java. That is correct. And the Java computer language, the programming language, is now run on billions of devices. Devices, not just computers or web servers or you know, applications, but devices. And guess what? Even this device, the NASA Curiosity rover, which is on Mars, runs Java. So I'd like to ask our panel members, what do you think are going to be the next technologies that we're going to have to secure? It's not just PCs, it's not just robots, it's not just uh, smart TVs. What's the next thing? And you got mics right over there. You think we'll go uh, into space? Because if you can hack a robot on space, that scenario should, from should, ID is should, not should so be. unrealistic. So do you hear me? People in the back, I didn't see you answer any question. So please raise your hand if you cannot hear me. No, raise your hand if you can hear me. <laughs> okay, so you can Perfect. hear. Okay, so what's gonna be the next thing that we should protect, right? So we're seeing something very, very interesting. The borderline between the physical world and the virtual world is slowly vanishing. 
So we know cars are integrated with computers. That means that this car exists both in the physical world and in the virtual world. Soon we will see people who are integrated with computers, right? So people will exist in the virtual world as well as in the physical world. So I say protecting the human body is probably the most interesting next phase. That's a good point, and we have that coming up in a second. But let me just introduce you to our audience, because I forgot to do that terrible host. So this is Mr. Manny Brasilai. Let's give it up to him. Uh, one thing you don't know about Manny, other than being the head IT auditor for Banca Polim, probably the biggest Israeli bank, Manny is also a rock star. And I'm not kidding, he's a rock musician. Uh, so I'm happy you're with us here on the panel today. And uh, Nimrod, my next guest, and I'll let you answer the next question. Nimrod Kozlovsky, Dr. Nimrod Kozlovsky, is a partner with Jerusalem Venture Partners. As in, he is in charge with cybersecurity investments by JVP, one of the leading, I guess, investment firms that's focusing on cyber right now. Cool, thanks. Uh, I think, Karen, you mentioned a really critical point in cybersecurity. The fact that we have what Professor Dan Gierk uh, used to call monolithic culture. We have so many devices from embedded system to industrial internet to our consumer devices all run on the same platform. So if there's a vulnerability in Java, we are all vulnerable. And he said that in evolution, we never trust that there is a single prototype or a single model that everybody is trusted upon and one failure can be catastrophic failure. So the problem that we have is that the industrial internet that we see, that all power plants and chemical plants and production is now running on the same platforms. All embedded devices are running on the same operating system. So we're Smart all basically people, screwed, pardon my French. We're not, we're not Sorry, screwed. Audience. We're not screwed, but the problem is that we have complex architecture that was not designed for security. And unless we start building from scratch the architectures, as we're doing now with cars, for example, as we're doing now with embedded systems, we will be exposed to the vulnerabilities of legacy systems 40 years ago. So we and need for to get to crack security, it in 10 seconds. So we need to get security into the foundational layers in the design phases of new technology. Is certainly, that right? And certainly. And like what Intel is trying to do now with trusted computing, that's a mechanism to secure from the infrastructure rather than later trying by software layer to secure the infrastructure. And I believe unless we sometimes give up legacy systems and change with kind of like leapfrogging into designs, secure design systems, we will be vulnerable for a long time to go. I, I want to hear from uh, Yaron Blachman as well. Yaron Blachman, please help me welcome him to the stage as well. Yaron 